Well, good evening again. It's good to be here and good to be able to come and minister to y'all tonight. And we thank you. And you know how we start this thing with our red rags. We take them and we wave them and say hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, I was listening to one preacher on TV today and he, <clears throat> he said, you know, one thing the churches don't like to preach about anymore is the blood of Jesus. That's what we would wave these red rags for, is to celebrate the blood of Jesus, because without that blood, we can't be saved. <clears throat> and preachers do need to preach about it more than what they do, because it is the saving grace of Jesus that got us the salvation that we have. It's not our salvation, but God's salvation. Yes. And so we need to be thankful for Jesus for giving it to us. Uh, don't you remember that we take prayer requests uh, you can come see us and give them to us you can write them down on a piece of paper and mail them to us at 15 South Forest Avenue Blue Brown, Alabama 36049 um, 3 and 1 Ministries you can call us and give them to us but we'd love for you to just come see us and tell us if you got needs might even be able to fill some of them for you. We also have Bibles that we like to give away. Uh, if you're in need of a Bible, we'd be glad to give you one. If you got Bibles that you don't need, we'd be glad for you to bring them to us and, and let us be able to give them out. Anybody that gives us a Bible, we, we, we save them for people that need them and we don't charge them nothing for it. And then, of course, donations. We take donations of any kind. We take donations of furniture, food, and clothing because we try to help people when they're in need. <clears throat> we also take donations of money that helps keep this ministry going. You can donate on our Facebook page, our ministry page, or you can mail it in to us again at 3 and 1 Ministries, 15 South Forest Avenue, Laverne, Alabama, 36049. And of course, if you need to call us, it's 334-546. 8311 or 8312. Either number. One is mine and one is my wife's. Either one of us be glad to talk to. Well, with all that being said and getting the announcements out of the way, other than remember our hours of operation, we are here Monday through front, Monday through Saturday, except for Thursday, which is a day we take off to do our running around that we need to do. And we may not be here due to a doctor's appointment every once in a while, but we'll let you know ahead of time if we're not going to be here. If that big yellow fruit sign is out front that says open, that means we're here. Somebody is ready to take care of all your needs by both of them anyway, if we can do it. Okay, tonight I'm going to talk to you out of the second chapter of Timothy, chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. Say that again now. Second, Second Timothy. Timothy, chapter 1, verses 6 through 10. Second Timothy, chapter 1. Verse 6, start with verse 6. It said, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou, art, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. Be, thou therefore ashamed, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his prisoner. Be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Jesus Christ before the world began, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Amen. 
This is Paul writing to Timothy. This is the second letter he wrote to Timothy. And we know Paul wrote a lot of the New Testament. He wrote a lot of these letters to these different ministers of God. And he did it to build them up, to strengthen them, to help them stay on the right track. You know, that's what we as Christians today should be doing with each other, is lifting each other up to stay focused on what we know is right. And he said to start off with, it says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by putting on of my hands. Now I take it to mean that he actually was there with Timothy and he laid hands on him. He laid hands on him to pray for him. That's what I believe he did. You can't help but know that when you got somebody that you're willing to lift up, praying for them is the best thing you can do. Praying for them will lift them up more than anything else you can do. But Paul always liked to go on and <clears throat> really instill in people, again, what he put in them to start with. And both in First and Second Corinthians, he was having to go back to those churches and straighten the people out because they were getting led astray by false teachers. Mm. Some of them even the disciples of Jesus. Not saying they were false teachers, but they were trying to still instill the law into the people. And the law, what, the, what, what they were supposed to be following, but the grace of Jesus Christ. And Paul had to go back and straighten that out at several, at several of the churches in, in Corinth. But he also faced false teachings from other false teachers. He goes on and says, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. <clears throat> you know, we all know that fear is of the devil. We all know that we fear something every now and then. It don't take much to really instill a little bit of fear in somebody sometimes. But we shouldn't fear because we have power. And I've heard preacher after preacher talk about this power and that the name power comes from the word dunamo, which is where dynamite comes from. And so this power that, that Paul is talking about here is power to move something. Now, we know that in thermodynamics, it takes power for something to move. It takes a lot of power. That's the kind of power God wants us to have. The kind of power it takes to move something. To move somebody. To help people get out of the rut that they're in. And not to fear what we're doing. Because God's not a fear. God's a power. You know, when you look back through the Old Testament, you see the power of God in so many instances and when he helped the children of Israel defeat their enemies. They didn't have to worry about doing it. God did it for them. That's because he used his power. Well, he wants us to use that same power. Not our power, but his power. And his power can help us defeat any enemies that we come across. And it goes on and says, not only do we have it says, for God hath not given us the fear, spirit of fear, but of power and of love. <clears throat> now, we all say that we love somebody, but there's not nobody on this earth that loved as much as Jesus Christ did. Because Jesus Christ loved with agape love, a love that, that, that can't be stopped. And we say that sometimes we feel like we have that kind of love, but would we be willing to give our child up for society? Mm. That's what God did. And that's the love that God has for us today, that he gave his only son, that we could have salvation. Not only of love, but of a sound mind. <clears throat> You know, in the world we live in today, that sound mind is something else. <clears throat> it 
It's been said several times that we don't believe people have common sense anymore. Well, common sense comes with a sound mind because it helps you make the right decisions. It makes you have, helps you make sane decisions. And we've got so much going wrong in our society today that sometimes it makes you think these people have lost their mind. They don't have a sound mind anymore. But that's what God wants us to have. And that sound mind means you make decisions based on what God can enable you to do and what God asks you to do. And of course, we don't live every day of our life thinking about God and knowing that God is directing every path we take, but we should. And we know that if we ever need him, we can call on him. But we should be calling on him for everything and in everything that we do. And by doing that, he will give us a sound mind to make the right decisions in whatever we do. And he goes on in verse 8, it says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his prisoner, but be partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. He gives us three commands in this scripture. <clears throat> I gave, it, gave them to Timothy, but, you know, I heard, again, I heard another preacher talking today about how when Paul wrote these letters, he wrote them to a single person, which means he meant, meant it for that person. Well, he did, but he also wrote it, and it's in God's Word because it applies to us today, too. He might have wrote it to Timothy, but it can apply to us, too, in what we do. It says, be not ashamed of the gospel. <clears throat> what better way can you not be ashamed of the gospel than to share your testimony with somebody whenever you need to not being ashamed of the gospel means you're going to love anybody you come in contact with you know I've, <laughs> sometimes you have to pat your own self on the back and it, it, it did me good today when one of the ladies at church where we went came up to me and said, Randy, I remember when we went to church with you somewhere else that you always made sure that you spoke to everybody. She said, that was something that I always admired about you. Well, you know, when you're doing that, you, when you're trying to speak to everybody you know and you try to treat them like you should treat them, it means you're not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because you're ready to share it with anybody. You're ready to do whatever it's going to take. It said, not, <clears throat> be not ashamed of the gospel preacher. You know, most preachers I think I've known are good preachers. They preach a good word. And we shouldn't be ashamed of them just because we don't like to go to their church. We should treat them like anybody else. We should treat them with love. Anytime we see them anywhere, speak to them and be good to them. And most of the time, that's what we do. But every once in a while, there may be a preacher that we really didn't care much about it. And we see them. We try to do everything we can to avoid them if they come in contact with us. <laughs> and we shouldn't be that way. The people that preach the gospel of, the, of, of Christ and, and reach out and really pour their heart out for the gospel, they should be lifted up by us. Even when we don't go to their church, if we see them and know who they are and know that they're a preacher, we should let them know that we're praying for them. We should let them know that we're standing behind them that we're standing behind what they do and what they say and help build them up. It said, be a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. Now that's something we don't like to hear. But how many of us had, has had to take some of those afflictions? How many of us have had to weather going through some tough times in our Christian life? We hadn't really had anything as hard as what Paul and the disciples had. But I know we've had hard times every once in a while, just like now, with this COVID-19 virus. People are having to stay home and stay out of church. They don't have to, but they do. And, you know, that's, in, in some ways, that's an affliction because you're losing that stability in Christ that you have when you don't go and fellowship with other Christians and get lifted up when you go and, and be a partaker of the things that happen. 
but the way society is going and the way government has been speaking, <clears throat> it's been said that <clears throat> before long, if we don't watch out, churches could be closed. There could be a building that they say you no longer gather in. Well, some churches are already set up. If they can't gather inside, they'll gather outside. And they ain't said nothing about stopping that yet. So it may be that we all have to start doing like Jesus did and start meeting outside on the hillside. <coughs> but that'd be okay too, as long as it's not real hot or pouring down rain. But you know, I don't think that slowed Jesus down either. I believe he delivered whatever message he had to deliver when he delivered. He was caught in several storms on the boat. Did it bother him? No. He got the disciples scared. But what did he say? Oh, ye of little faith. And you know, Jesus gave the disciples so many good examples of how to stay strong. But yet still, even them walking with him day in and day out, a lot of times they didn't, they didn't catch hold of what he was doing. Just like Peter stepping out of that boat walking on water. Well, he had all his faith in Jesus then. Until Satan said, what do you think you're doing? And he took his eyes off of Jesus and heard, listened to Satan and started sinking. Well, why did he start sinking? Because he realized he was walking on water and he feared he might drown. That's the fear that Satan put in him that day. And of course, Jesus would know reached down and pulled him up. But that's how easy it is for fear to take hold of us. And that's what this verse was saying. Don't have a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And be ready to stand for the, the afflictions that can come your way. If at some point in time in our life today that we come across a time when somebody tells us you can't talk about Jesus no more, you can't have church no more, well, is that going to stop you? Well, as long as we got this internet here, it's going to go out over Facebook. Whether we're in this building or having to sit at home or having to sit out in the backyard, we'll still have church. And we'll still have it on Facebook as long as we've got connections. But you know, they can control that too. They can cut that off in a heartbeat. They can control anything that goes on out there on the, on the internet. But in some ways that might be good because then that means you're going to have to see each other to be able to talk to each other and fellowship with each other. It won't be no more over the air. But it'll have to be face to face. But he goes on in verse 9 and it says, Who has saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. In this verse, he did four things for us. The number one thing, he saved. You know, if we don't thank God for nothing else, we need to thank Him that He sent Jesus so that we can be saved. So that we could have that chance to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus Christ and with God and all His angels and all those seraphim and all those beasts that are around about the throne praising Him. And we can be there to do the same thing. And that's, that, that's just awesome that He saved us where we can do that. He also called us to a holy calling. He called each and every one of us to be able to be a minister for him. You say, but I'm not a preacher. Well, you're a minister if you've got a testimony. You're a minister if you tell anybody about Jesus. You don't have to have a super fancy degree, a doctorate, or anything like that to be able to be a minister for Jesus Christ. He called us to do that. And we can do that very easily just by giving our testimony to people. And some people say, well, my testimony is not, not no big deal. It is a big deal if you got saved. Mm -hmm. If you got saved, that's the greatest miracle that ever happened in your life. Mm -hmm. I don't care what other miracles you think you might have had in your life. The biggest miracle you can ever have in your life is to be saved by Jesus Christ. 
because you're going to be able to be able to spend eternity in heaven with him when that happens. And you're called whenever you get saved. You're called to be a witness for him. It's not just to get saved and and really, when you really and truly get saved, you should know that that's your calling to get out and do something for Jesus. You see, some people, when they first get saved, they get set on fire. They want to do anything and everything they can for the church. And two or three weeks down the road, you don't see them anymore. What happened? They try to do too much too soon. When God calls us and saves us, He calls us to do His work, but He also calls us to start learning. Learning what to do and when to do it and how to do it. And that takes working with other Christians. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so, so important for fellowship between Christians. And then we're blessed by His purpose and grace. And we are. You know, that's something that that I've been made more aware of through what I'm going through. It's how we're blessed. By His purpose and grace. You know, anybody that hadn't been through anything where they've had to have medical procedures done or Maybe had to go through a tough time finding a job or maybe just had a rough life. Don't know what it is to be blessed by God. But I've had to praise Him more in, these, in this last year since this started September was a year ago than I have all my life, I believe. Because it turned around every corner was another blessing that God poured out on us. He's, he's made it possible for us to do so much as far as getting our lives more in order. He's helped to see me that I needed to slow down in my life. I was like anybody else. I felt like I needed to be running 200 miles an hour every day, trying to accomplish everything I could. Well, I got so many things right now I'd love to do, but I know they're going to get done in time. They're going to get done when God decides that they need to be done. And if he were to tell me to speed up and get to work and get all this stuff done, then I'd do it. But I don't think God intends for us to be somebody that's running 90 miles an hour every day. He wants us to take our time and slow down and see his salvation. See what it's all about. See that he has blessed us with purpose and grace. You know, without the grace of God, we wouldn't be here. Without the mercy that He shows us every day, we'd be in a lot of trouble. But God gives us everything we need. And most of the time, He knows when we need it, and we don't. Things happen. I couldn't tell you at the times I've had to just turn around and praise God because something happened. You get a check in the mail you weren't looking for. That's happened twice since I've been off work. You get a report from the doctor you wasn't expecting. You get a, a bad report from a doctor you wasn't expecting. Do you praise God then? Yes, you do. Because that's just another opportunity to, for him to show out. Mm -hmm. And that's what it talks about when we deal with the affliction. Afflictions help helps God show out through us. And when we when people can see that we're afflicted by something, but yet still still stand strong for God, that makes him want to know what we got. That makes him want to ask questions. And that's what we want to get people to do when they think they know it all. To ask questions. How come you can live the life you live and be so happy and go around and do the things you do? Knowing that your world could fall apart just any time. Well, I know my world ain't going to fall apart. I may lose everything i got. But I'd be like Job. I still try to stay, stay, do my best to stay focused on God. 
Because now if you want to talk about somebody that lost everything, Job did. He lost. He was the richest man on earth at, at the time that he was tempted by Satan. <clears throat> he lost his children. He lost all of his wealth. He lost his wife. He lost his home. He almost lost three friends. But it was because he was going to run them off because of what they were doing. But he turned around and prayed for them. And when Job turned around and prayed for these three men that was trying to get him to see the wrong that he did, and Job kept telling him, I don't know what I did. I didn't do anything wrong. But when he prayed for his three friends, that's when God started blessing him with more than what he ever had. So you see, when we pray for people that are against us, God's going to help us. He planned for us before the ages. And you know, this is what's hard to fathom. But before time began, God knew I'd be standing right here tonight. Mm -hmm. That's that that's hard to think about. That's hard, that's hard to believe. That's hard to to really wrap your mind around. You say, well, that means everything's predestined. Yes, it is. But we don't know what the desti destination is. And I don't know that I'd want to know what the rest of my life is going to be made up of. I just soon take it day by day and know that if I wake up in the morning, God's got another day for me to do something. But he knew what each and every one of us was going to be doing every day before we were even born. And then he goes on in verse 10, but it is not made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ. But it is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. These four things that Jesus Christ did in this verse. Number one, he made manifest the blessings by his personal appearance on earth. You know, I think it had to be special to walk with Jesus. There was thousands of people that followed him. We know there were 5,000 when he first fed on that hill, 5,000 men, not to mention women and children. But all these people saw Jesus firsthand. The disciples walked with him day by day. He was in the temple with the priest. The priest even got to see him and talk to him. And you know, that, that lets you know how hard-headed some people can be. When Jesus could walk at the temple and talk to the priest, and the priest, priest tried to, try to convict him of doing something wrong, not knowing who he was. Which his disciples really didn't know who he was. They knew he was special. They knew he could do things. They saw the miracles he did. <clears throat> and I think in the end, they really came to know that Jesus was something really special that God said. But I don't really think they felt that he was the Son of God. If they had those, they would have all probably went to the cross with him. But what did they do? They scattered when he got arrested that night. Peter even denied him three times after Jesus told him the word. And Peter says, never, I'll die, I'll die before I deny you, Jesus. But he did. He denied him three times. And when Peter realized what he had done, he wept and he begged for forgiveness. You know, that's we have to do that more than once every day because we fail Jesus in so many ways. But he's but that was one thing that we need to be really thankful for that he was made manifest to the people of this earth by coming here. That he did take the time to leave heaven. You know. I would imagine when we get to heaven, you know, we've said, we've heard people say, I bet if my husband or wife or child or whatever that's died and gone on to heaven, I bet if they could, they'd come back to earth. Mm -hmm. No, I bet they wouldn't. And I bet we wouldn't either. When we see the beauty and glory of heaven, <clears throat> we ain't going to go nowhere else. 
I think it's going to be hard for us to come back to this earth and rule and reign with Jesus because we're going to, be, we're going to fall in love with heaven so much. But we're going to want to do whatever God tells us to do. So that's what we're going to do. He abolished death. You say, yeah, but it's appointed unto man wants to die. Wants to die. Or else be taken in the rapture. If we just die one time, we're okay. Because if we just die one time, that means we're going to be in heaven with Jesus. You say, well, how can somebody die twice? Well, if you die the second death, it means you're going to go before that white throne judgment and be cast into hell, which is the second death. And that death you don't want to face. But Jesus abolished death for, the, for us if we put our faith and trust in him. If we accept him for the Son of God, who he was, that he was born of a virgin, that he lived his life here on this earth and did the things he did and died on that cross and shed that blood for our salvation, then he has abolished death for us. He also brought life through the gospel. A lot of people say it's hard to be a Christian, that it's hard to live this life and enjoy it. And I've seen, and it, it hurts me when I see some people that have always been to church or, or seem like to be good Christians but can't never put a smile on their face. They're always frowning about something. I've even seen preachers that are that way. Mm -hmm. And that shouldn't be. We all should be glad and happy that we are brought to life through the gospel of Jesus Christ. That should make us happy. Preachers especially. They're given a, a job to do that is not easy. They're given a job to do that sometimes they wish they hadn't have took it. We know preachers that have got into the business and got out of it in short order because it was more than they could handle. Well, maybe they weren't supposed to be called to be a preacher to start with. I thought about that several times, me getting up here doing what I do. But I like to think that what the message that I relay is coming straight from God's Word, and it's the truth of God's Word. And I think that's what people are missing more and more today is what the truth of God's Word is all about. And then he brought immortality through the Gospel. <clears throat> You know, people would like, like to say they'd love to live forever. Well, if Adam and Eve hadn't sinned, sin, guess what? People would be living forever today. And it's going to get back that way one day. When Jesus comes back to set up his kingdom in the new heaven and the new earth, we'll all be living for immortality, with immortality. Of course, if we're raptured and in heaven with Jesus... We're there, eternity. We're there for eternity anyway. But there'll be a new heaven and a new earth where people begin to grow and reproduce. And they'll be living for living with immortality too. So, you know, through Jesus we gained immortality because there's going to be a chance for it all to happen all over again, just like God intended. And we need to be thankful for that. We need to be thankful that we're going to be able to just, we're going to be with God for eternity. There won't be no need for no sun and no moon anymore because Jesus and God will take care of all of that. They'll provide everything we need. They'll be the tree of life that we can partake of constantly. They'll be the river of life that we can drink from. It, it, it's just going to be an awesome time when we get to heaven and Jesus provided all of that when he gave us the ability to have immortality through him. Mm -hmm. And this is what we need to be praising God for every day. <clears throat> when we get up in, in the mornings and we realize that it is morning again. If you like me, you get up two or three times during the night so you know it's not morning a lot of times when you get up. But <laughs> When you get up and you see that little bit of light coming through the window 
and you know you're fixing to face another day, do you say, good God, it's morning, or thank you, God, you let me see another day? Most of the time we regret it because we got to get up and get ready and go to work. Most of the time we know we got to get up and get to moving. But we should start each day thanking God that he gave us this, other, this, this another day to live this life that he's given us, to live this life that we can share with other people by them knowing that Jesus Christ helps us and leads us each and every day. I want to thank you all tonight for listening to me. Again, I would like to say that we would love to see you all. You know, we have a lot of stuff up here. <clears throat> that my wife, and she's rooked me into helping her acquire this stuff. But we've got a lot of stuff up here that we love to give away. It's not just books and Bibles. But we have stuff that we collect through different means. And if you'd ever like to come up here and just see what we got to give you, well, we can't tell you what all it is. You just have to come see it. So you need to come see us. Because we need to start getting rid of some of these things. And they're free. When I say we give it away, we give it away. Because we don't need it, and we need to get it out of the way. We even have furniture sometimes that we give away. So you need to come see what all we got. But we'd love to just see you just to be seeing you. Just to come in and sit down and have a cup of coffee with us or a soft drink or a snack. And just sit and visit with us for a while and, and, and enjoy the fellowship of the Living Water Coffee House. We'd love to see you. South, 15 South Forest Avenue, Luverne, Alabama. Any day of the week except Thursday and Sunday. Well, you can come see us on Sunday because we're here on Sunday night. We'd love to have you with us rather than watching us on Facebook. It's so much better when we can see you and know that you're there and be able to lay hands on you like Paul did with Timothy and bless you. We thank you and we love you. Just hope to see you again next week. And We do have Bible study on Tuesday night and Saturday night. We welcome you to come to that. We never know what we're going to talk about. Uh, I, I think I'm fixing to try to get back on the schedule of coming up with a specific Bible study. But that's kind of hard because people can't always be there every time we have the study. So a lot of times we just pick what we're going to do when we get here at night. and That way it's, it's not something that somebody's expecting. But we do try to get in a good discussion of what God's Word is talking about in our Bible studies. And we'd like for everybody to participate in it. So if you'd like to be in a good Bible study, come join us on Tuesday or Saturday night. We'd love to have you. Uh, next Saturday night is game night. Next Saturday night is game night. and My wife don't know this, but I want to start some of these Saturday nights where we show movies. And we're going to have a way to do that here before long. So there may be a night that we'd love, to, we'd love to show you a good Christian movie. We'll announce it and let you come and join us. We'll be able to have popcorn. We'll be able to have hot dogs. You can't never tell. But whatever we have, most of the time it'll be on the house. Uh, we do like to try to see if we can get donations to fund things like that. And we do a lot of times. But you just need to come see us and see what all is happening up here. We've been here two years. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and we've met a lot of nice people. We've met people from as far away as England. You never know who's going to walk through these doors, people traveling through this town. Young man the other day called the shop because he found us on Google Maps and asked where we a coffee house. And Bess said, yes. He said, how can I get to you? I need some coffee. He was from Arkansas but he made it here. So you never know, you know, we just have a good time when we're here. We love to meet people and we love to see what people's up to. So come see us anytime you can. If you just need to stop by for just a minute, we don't care. Just stop by and see us because we want to love on you. And when I say that, 
that throws out social distance. <laughs> but we try to we try to obey what our laws say. But we'd still love to see you and love to see you come and visit with us. We thank you and we love you. And just tune in next week. We'll be here. Amen.